Good everyone, all good to this video, and today we have another History Chats video, and today we are doing about a Mr. Matsuo Hajiri. Now, obviously, this name may ring a bell, obviously. We have the Hajiri's A5M4 in War Thunder, and obviously I have the A5M4 down there with a talisman, which I earned several years ago. And obviously, same with the Chinese T26s, I cannot be asked to do two videos on two exact same aircraft. So I thought, well, we'll leave the A5M4 for a more talk about the A5M4 when that comes around, because obviously we've still got to go through Britain, then obviously we're going to Japan. But I thought, why don't we turn Hejiri's A5M4 into a video, into a history chat. Obviously, I hope you appreciate the first one. And, well, um, I'm going to say beforehand, my voice is pretty bad. So I may have to take a drink break in between um, comment, well, like paragraphs of this. Because I've spent nearly an hour writing down all my notes that I've got here. Obviously, I've cut out bits that I don't think were important. And everything just went from there, really. Sorry, I've got a really bad voice. <coughs> Excuse me. Like I say, I may have to cut out in between because of a cough. I don't know where this has come from. Chances are, since my auntie's had a bit of a, shall we say, a, um, like a, a bit of a sore throat recently, I've probably caught something from that. I don't know, but <coughs> I'm not letting it stop me. Okay, so, as usual, same with last time, we are not going to be discussing the aircraft or the, ba or the battle. We're just going to be talking about Mr. Matsuo Hajiri. So, let us begin. So, he was born on the 10th of November in 1913 on the Shizuoka Prefecture. Like I said, I will probably butcher Japanese pronunciation, but I do apologize. On the southern coast of the Japanese island of Honshu. After finishing school, he worked briefly as a fireman. Pretty good job. It gets quite heated there. That's your one dad joke, by the way. Um, before joining the enlisted ranks of the Imperial Japanese Navy. A gifted aviator. One moment. I, I know the engine sound has not been turned down, so there we go. Um, a gifted aviator. He was put into single engine fighters after excelling the competitive training regime of the Japanese naval aviators. Graduated in 1935 from flight training, he quickly rose through the ranks to become a petty officer in 1939 and flew the A5M4 naval fighter, which is the aircraft you can obviously see in War Thunder. Obviously, it's fully replicated, this is the same tail number, this is the same paint scheme he had on his aircraft. That is exactly the same as what he flew with. So, he was then stationed to the aircraft carrier of Soryu. That may be familiar to some people. And the Soryu was obviously stationed in home waters after extensive operations during the Second Sino-Japanese War. Now, I'm not certain if he took part in that conflict. From what I've been able to find, he didn't. Sources vary. So, this is where it gets interesting, because the A5M4 is barely were mentioned in the sources that I've been able to find. From what I've been able to find, he mostly flew zeros. So in August 1940, he was he joined the 12th Coup, and he was soon to equip with this new Japanese A6M20, which is a very well-known fighter, both in real life and in War Thunder. So... This was met with a bit of resentment, because obviously the A5M4 could actually outturn the Zero in some regards, due to its lighter weight and everything. But obviously they tested it in a variety of dogfights, and it was found that the A5M4 could still hold its own against the newer Zero. He was one of the first pilots selected to transfer a... Well, the first batch of brand new A6M fighters, which I believe were A6M1s, to Hankou, China for operational usage. So on August 19th, well, 19th of August 1940, he was one of the first pilots to use the A6M fighter 
on its first combat debut. Now this did not involve any aerial action. This was led by Lieutenant Tomotsu Yokoyama, which involved escorting a bomber force, most likely G3M Neels. <clears throat> Whilst the famous fighter was not involved in any air-to-air -air combat, as I mentioned at the start, Zero stunned the world by setting the new record for the longest distance flown for an escort mission by a single engine fighter. Obviously, as the war went on, the Zero's long range was pretty unimportant because, well, they were far outclassed, but that's a whole different story for another day. So, whilst the Zero... Well, when the Zero first saw combat a month later, so obviously in... That would have been September. I believe. Uh, honestly, my brain's all over this place this morning. The Zero pilots claimed 27 Chinese I-15s and I-16s destroyed with no losses to the Japanese. Hajiri found a new confidence and respected his aircraft. It is unclear how many kills he scored at this time. Personally, I reckon about two. I think he got two, personally, because that would make sense, given the future kills that I'm going to talk about. By now, a confident and flamboyant character, due to his long waxed moustache, which earned him the nickname Mustachio. Trust me, do a Google image, you'll see what I mean. Hajiri flew with three other pilots, all flying Zeros, on what is claimed as a dangerous prank. Now, I don't think it was a prank, personally, because it involved China. And obviously, China and Japan weren't exactly having the best relations. So, on October 4th, 1940, the four Zero pilots flew to an airbase in Chengdu, which is obviously a Chinese pronunciation there, it's a, someplace in China, where they then attempted to vandalize a row of parked aircraft and the command post by setting it on fire. The alarm was quickly raised and the four pilots were forced to split to their aircraft, or sprint to their aircraft, bullets flying over their heads. Nigeria had already found his aircraft and taken off at this time, and he managed to find three Chinese aircraft in the air and proceeded to engage them. It is unclear what kind of aircraft, if I had to guess, probably I-16s, or maybe even something like a... I don't know... Maybe a Allied P-40? It's not, it's not mentioned, but all I know is that he engaged three Japanese, well, sorry, Chinese aircraft. He proceeded to engage with his brand new Zero, shooting down two before heading home. Well, heading for home, I should say. Hajiri was soon rotated out of combat back to Japan, with seven Chinese aircraft kills under his belt. Now, obviously, it's mentioned here that he's obviously got two kills, but obviously, it's now saying seven. Excuse me. So like I say, I think he scored two in the 27 aircraft slaughter and possibly a few other kills are happening, but these are not made clear. And obviously with seven Chinese aircraft kills under his belt, he was made to be a instructor. So this is where it starts to get a bit more a bit more interesting for him. Obviously, he's been out of the combat or the combat for almost three years now because his action recommences, and obviously the sources recommence in July 1943, where now he is a warrant officer. He flew as part of the 204th or 204th Air Group in the Solomon Islands. On the 23rd of September of that year. He flew part of a 27 interception wing to intercept a combined American and Australian bombing raid. Australian bombers were easy pickings due to them flying upside down against Kylie Airfield in Papua New Guinea and its surrounding AA defences. That was an Australian joke, by the way. He was able to down two 
F4U Corsairs. However, some of the sources I found was three. <coughs> I do apologise, like I say, I cannot help the pro. But um, it was some sources claimed three kills on Corsairs. I've been able to mostly find two. However, he was so badly wounded after engaging these aircraft, he soon had to return to Japan for treatment. After recovering, he was kept in Japan as a test pilot, but soon saw combat action again against, obviously, the US bombing of Japan, which, again, is unclear of what he was flying. If I had to guess, an N1K Shiden. And in April 1945, he claimed two B-29s destroyed. Obviously, I don't think Japanese aircraft had gun cameras, so that cannot be confirmed. But in April 1945, he was wounded by B-29 defensive fire, which obviously is 50 caliber. And that was his final flight of the war in April 1945, which obviously was not long before the nuclear bombs were dropped. Matsuro Hajiri is in total credited with between 13 to 15 kills, none of which were scored in the A5M. And, well, some are unknown. Like I say, those, obviously I mentioned two Chinese aircraft and all of a sudden it bumps up to five. Like I say, those are unknown kills. Probably I-15s to I-16s. And, obviously, sadly, he passed away on January the 15th, 1997, at age 83. So, obviously, this is a bit of a shorter one, because, obviously, the limited information I've been able to find. As I said before, I do apologize for my throat. This may affect future recordings. I don't know. Let's hope not, because, well, it's rather annoying. But I um, hope you enjoyed a brief video on um, Matsuri Hajiri. Obviously, I've not been able to find all that much on him because some of it is Japanese, so I obviously cannot put it, well, translate it, shall we say. But obviously, he was credited between 13 to 15 kills. I personally think he got around about 13 to 14, if I had to make an estimate. Because obviously, seven Chinese aircraft, two to three Corsairs, um, and obviously... 2B-29s, it, it, it depends, because obviously we don't know what other action he saw, we don't know if all the kills are listed, because obviously Japan um, obviously got nuked, and obviously the documents were destroyed, so it's very hard to find information on a man. That's one thing to take into account whenever you do like um, Japanese and especially German um, aces of World War Two and all that, because obviously it was a it was a double ace. Some sources are claiming a triple ace. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna go rest my voice because well, it it's really sore right now, as you can probably tell. But obviously, I hope you enjoyed the first episode of the brief history chats. And obviously, I hope you enjoyed this one with um, Matsuo Hajiri. Obviously, 13 to 15 kills. That's pretty impressive to be honest obviously for a World War 2 pilot so obviously the, I think the most was like in the hundreds if I remember rightly but whatever if anyone's curious about the gameplay it was a win I ended up with four kills just in case anyone was curious but anyway I'm gonna let you guys off I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all on the next one